watching Live to Worship with Beverly McKinney Ministries. I live to worship you with all my heart, my soul. I live to worship you. You're the best thing I can do. Each breath I take is for your praise. I live to worship you. You might feel discouraged today, but keep holding on to Jesus. This next song is called, Don't Give Up My Child. Sometimes your heart grows weary. Your path is dark and dreary. Sometimes it's hard for you to even pray. Seems like trouble. have a very special guest with us, uh, Pastor Woody Elmore. Well, it's good to have you here today, Pastor Woody, and I just wanted to um, thank you for coming and being with us today on the program. I uh, just wanted to ask you to share a little bit about yourself, your testimony, where you, where you come from. Amen. Well, uh, I want to thank you, Pastor Bev, for having me here on Live to Worship. Uh, just very excited to have this blessed opportunity. Uh, first of all, I am from a a uh, small reservation called Hat Creek, California, and a uh, very small community. There's really uh, not too many people want to go to Hat Creek, California because it's nothing but lava rocks and dust. So, wow. <laughs> But I thank God, uh, you know, um, the Lord Jesus Christ came by our little church. Um, I was at the tender age of 13 years old. And, of course, I've been born and raised pretty much in church. Uh -huh. And so I knew all the Sunday school stories and I knew all the, wow. the stuff like that, you know, growing up, you know, mm -hmm. in church. And mm -hmm. so, but uh, one thing I didn't understand was conviction. 
-hmm. You know, and I don't think we could properly explain what conviction is. It's an experience. Right. And at the mm -hmm. age of, well, I was about 12 years old, just going on, I think, just the next month or so mm -hmm. to 13 years old. Um, but anyways, we had a, an evangelist stop by. Uh, his name was Brother Sowers, just a small little white guy. Uh -huh. And uh, he was just passing through, didn't know anybody, but he saw our sign Wednesday night midweek service. Mm -hmm. And so he thought, I'm going to stop in and join them for church. And so anyways, the Spirit of the Lord moved on my pastor and she allowed him to speak. And the funniest thing is, is when he began to uh, minister in song, is he had this little acoustic guitar and he would actually sing right in front of you. He would leave the pulpit area, go into each individual and sing right in front wow. of them. And, and what made me laugh is he began to whistle. And, you know, here he is whistling right in front of me, close as me to you here. And uh -huh. he's, he's got this acoustic guitar and he's whistling. And so I was at that rebellious age, just kind of getting into rebellion, you know, and some uh -huh. of my cousins was there. And so I thought I had to be cool, you know, and uh -huh. make fun of this guy sitting in the back of the church there. Yeah. Well, when he began to look me right in the eyeball, I mean, I'll tell you what, the anointing of God hit me. And I, I felt like crying and, uh, you know, tears begin to stream down my eyes. And, and, you know, as a young man, I thought, you know what, what are you crying for? Why are you crying? Mm -hmm. You know, and I was trying to think, think of something else, think of something else. Because, you know, I thought if I could think of something else, I'm not going to cry. But man, the anointing of God, the conviction power hit me. And the love of God that I felt radiating from this gentleman, mm -hmm. you know, and he began to sing and, and, and he, he, he looked at me and said, young man, that's the love of God. Wow. And man, I'll tell you what, I broke like a baby. And, uh, you know, in California, there's so many gangs, you know, started up and everything. Well, I, I, I'm a firm believer, just myself, that the gang started in the church. And the reason I say that is because I had a gang of elderly ladies that when they saw me cry, I mean, they bombarded me, gathered me and, uh, all around me, and they laid hands on me. And, you know, man, they was just praying for me and my head was going this way and that way and they were just you know they this is back in the days when uh you know uh they took you to the old-fashioned altar oh, yeah. right amen nowadays you know uh you know they just have this repeat after me type of prayer right. and everybody prays but this this was back in the days when then they drug you to the altar mm -hmm. and you prayed through you didn't pray till you were through mm -hmm. you prayed through and right. so yeah. <laughs> praise god they begin to pray me through and uh you know uh i was down there repenting and they was repenting how having me you know repent and uh they kept me down there for about a good 45 minutes to an hour just wow. praying i was crying and they had other young people praying and mm -hmm. and uh my lord we just you know i got up feeling so light i mean i wasn't a drug addict i wasn't a you know an alcoholic mm -hmm. or you know but sin is sin and i want to tell you that mm -hmm. sin is heavy that's right and, it, and man puts you know levels and degrees of sin but you know whether you're a liar or whether you're a murderer or a thief, an adulterer, it's all sin in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. And I had sin in my life, mm -hmm. you know, but when I repented and I asked Jesus to come into the front doors of my heart, praise God, it changed my life. I got up light as a feather. I felt free. I felt clean. And uh, that's the day I asked the Lord Jesus into my heart at the tender age of around 13 years old. And God began to, uh, you know, do a work in my life. I began playing the drums and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, begin to uh, write songs, play guitar wow. and uh, wrote my own, uh, my first song at the age of 13 years old called mm -hmm. Stand for Jesus. And, oh, wow. uh, you know, then I begin to progress from there mm -hmm. and praise the Lord uh, became the youth pastor around the age of 16 years old oh, wow. and uh, so uh, from then on just began to be in different types of ministry evangelism and stuff and mm -hmm. you know but uh, praise God you know from Hat Creek California later begin to uh, pastor in Fresno, California, and mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, branched out into uh, Billings, Montana, was mm -hmm. a director of ministry there of the home church, and, and my wife was youth pastor, and then from there, we are now the senior pastors of uh, River of Life Church in Mandarin, North Dakota, Amen. so that's where we're at yes, now. Yes, that's God. great. Wow, that's, that's awesome. Here's, here's a song from Pastor Woody. This song uh, we're going to share with you is entitled, Ride Out Your Storm. The Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So I want to encourage you, hold on to Jesus and ride out your storm. You've been in the storm, and it seems like forever.
storm's got you drifting Just hold on to Jesus
Take me past the outer courts And through the holy place Past the brazen altar Lord, I want to see your face Take me past the crowds of people And the priests who sing their praise Lord, I hunger and thirst for your righteousness But it's only found one place Take me share a story uh, about Elisha. The Bible tells us that uh, Elisha was was traveling someplace and, and there is this woman in the Bible that uh, she had this place and, and the scriptures tell us that she constrained Elisha to come to her house. She bid him to come as he was traveling, he was ministering and so Elisha came and you know this woman, she she didn't have anything, you know, but she had a room to, for Elisha to stay. And the, the scriptures tell us that Elisha asked her, you know, if, if there was something that she would want from the Lord. And, and you know, she, she knew that she couldn't have a child. And, and, and you know, 
it, it might look impossible to man. You know, there's times that, you know, there's, there's women that I know that have been barren and, and many times they had the desire to have a child and that, and that would look impossible, you know, but with God, all things are possible. And, and what happened in the story was Elisha, you know, he prayed for this, this woman that uh, gave him a, a home or a room to stay in. And as he prayed for her, God gave this woman a supernatural miracle. Pretty soon, you know, she, she had a, a son. And, you know, and I wanted to share that today because this is the way our God is. You know, when, when, we, when we give and we give from our heart to the Lord, you know, God will bless us back many times. You know, there's so many powerful stories. But what I wanted to encourage the women that are out there today that, you know, if, you, if God would lead you to help us, you know, to, to make this... Uh, these programs possible through your finances, through the people that are out there fin financially, if God would put it upon your heart to to help us, because all, you know, what we want to do is it's for souls, it's for people that are lost out there so that we can reach reach our 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 people. And, you know, in the, in the nations of the world, you know, I believe God wants to touch, touch the people. So today I just wanted to encourage you with that. If you want to help us, that you can, you can reach us at, at this number. That's why the word of prophecy can come to you and say that you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Because to God, it's already done. It's already there.
the God of this universe wants to talk with me. Praise the Lord. And I want to share that with you, our viewers here. That you know what? The God that created mankind, He wants to talk with you. He wants to fellowship with you. Oh, He wants to hear your voice. He wants to have you pray to Him. He wants to know your favorite foods, your favorite colors. The God that created this universe and spoke it into existence wants to spend time with you. I want you to know that you are precious. You are loved and adored by God. Oh, He wants to give you the finest. He wants to bless you with good things. He wants to hear you laugh. And uh, I, you know, you might be hurting right now. You might have gone through the rocks of divorce, uh, which I have in my life. I, I've been through struggles. I've been rejected. I've been kicked out of churches. I've been kicked out of, you know, my family turned against me. I've been through some hard things. But you know what? God has pieced my life together and he's placed it all back together and he, he's, he's given me songs. He's given me things that have brought me through. But most of all, his word was there that said, I love you. I'll never forsake you. When your family rejects you, he said, I'll pick you up. I'll be there for you. And so I want to encourage you today. Give your life to Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you have somebody that loves you, that adores you, uh, that cherishes you. Uh, even the Bible says, even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, and so he's right there. He's just a prayer away. And so I want to encourage you, reach out to Jesus Christ today. Talk with him. Ask him into the front doors of your heart uh, and he will be there for you to touch you, change your life, make something beautiful out of it. He's got a way of piecing it all together and making something great and make your life count. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us on Live to Worship with Beverly Kelly Ministries. We just want to encourage you to call the number on the screen and just help us uh, reach our people across Canada and across the United States. God bless. I live to worship you. You're the best thing I can do. Each breath I take is for your praise. I live to worship you. If you would like to contact any of the guests appearing on Live to Worship, you can do so by emailing the address on the screen for booking and contact information. In Indian country, there's a lot of problems with our Native American youth going through a lot of suicides, different reservations, and a lot of uh, alcohol and drug abuse. And we need to reach out to our people and try to let them know through television that there's hope that they don't, they don't have to give up on life, but there's hope through Christ. God bless.